The Fokker triplane is one of the most iconic and recognizable aircraft of World War I, designed in 1917 by Anthony Fokker. What is also very interesting is the story behind Anthony Fokker and how he, as a young man of 21 years old, and a small group taught themselves how to design and build aircraft and use this aircraft to teach themselves how to fly. This video is the story of Anthony Fokker. Anthony Fokker is from the Netherlands. Uh, in 1911, Fokker and two colleagues decided that they would get together, teach themselves how to build an aircraft in these very, very early days of flight, and use this aircraft to teach themselves how to fly, perhaps produce other aircraft. The plane they designed is the Spin. Spin is a Dutch word for spider, a very apt nickname for an aircraft with this amount of flying wires. You can see that it took a lot of courage to fly this airplane. You're just on your own in this open fuselage structure. Uh, with a puller uh, tractor engine and a twin upper and lower runner. This three view of an early spin variant shows the slight aft wing swept sweep characteristic of all spin aircraft. The early European aircraft designers did their best to design inherent stability in aircraft. Aft wing sweep was a method to do this. Uh, the designers felt that a stable aircraft would be the most safest aircraft to fly and was the correct design approach. This is a view of probably one of the very first spin variants. It's unique and you see the very narrow track of the landing gear and the widely spaced uh, skids mounted under the wings, uh, very robust skids. Also notice a complete lack of any vertical tail surfaces, either a fin or a rudder. Almost for sure this uh, design prototype was used to see if the aircraft would hold together structurally. The wide um, landing gear skids provided lateral stability, uh, almost for sure this was straight ahead powered test hops just to get a feel for the very beginnings of flight. The catch would be with the lack of any fin for directional stability or rudder, it was just about impossible to do any turns of this aircraft and I'm sure that became evident after the first uh, test hops. But again you have to start somewhere and this is an innov innovative way with the wing skids to just practice the beginnings of flight. In this picture, we can see Anthony Fokker in the cockpit of a, a spin about a year later. You can see the side-mounted radiators on the frame fuselage, uh, the triangular cabin struts on the, fu um, on the fuselage with the rigging wires to hold the wings in place. Again, character characteristic of all spin aircraft. This side view of the spin shows the beginning of a fuselage. Also, you can see the more normalized landing gear with the uh, wheels mounted onto the uh, landing gear struts. Also, Fokker has included an upper and lower rudder necessary to do any sort of turns in this aircraft. Note also the fairly thin wing section, as well as a lack of ailerons on the wing or elevator on the stabilizer. Uh, Fokker, like many early designers, to include the Wright brothers, used warping of the control surfaces to, um, uh, to move the aircraft. Uh, warping was pretty common until about 1916. It just did not give enough control authority and eventually everybody went to hinge surfaces, uh, ailerons, and elevators. Another view of Fokker in the cockpit of a later version of the spin. You can see the rectangular K-Man struts right in front of him. Again, a very large engine for the time on this size aircraft. Uh, the key to all flight at this time was having a reliable, powerful engine to make the aircraft work. And again, you can see Fokker just perched in the cockpit, you get a full appreciation of just uh, the amount of determination it took to uh, get into these aircraft and teach yourself how to fly. But the spin did fly. Uh, this is a picture of one uh, spin taking off. You can see it's a pretty good climb angle. And Fokker did use it to teach himself how to fly. This is a nose view of a further version of the spin. You can see that rectangular K-bound strut in front of the pilot and the more robust wider landing gear with the uh, skids to keep the aircraft from nosing over and do any damage to the uh, engine or motor. This is a view of perhaps the most advanced spin. Uh, you can see that their fuselage is more or less enclosed and there's place for two people, both a pilot and um, uh, instructor and student. Also innovative is the use of um, a fuselage mounted skid. Most aircraft of the day had a tail skid in the back. Because of the lower rudder, there was no place to put the tail skid on this early ver uh, version. So Fokker had to design a fuselage mounted skid. You can see it's connected to the main landing gear and then a post right underneath the pilot. Again, you can see the profusion of flying wires needed to hold everything together, but the beginnings of uh, a spar into the wing Note also no elevator ailerons, still using wing warping to uh, allow for control authority of the aircraft. The spin 
is a popular aircraft and several groups have made modern day replicas. The replicas are interesting because we can have a more detailed look at this very important aircraft. Also what is of interest is the fact that the designers still had to use many of the same techniques that Farquhar had to use back in 1911. In this case uh, robust fuselage mounted cabine struts upper and lower and then um, uh, very strong rigging wires to keep everything in place of the structural integrity of the aircraft. Note also the upper and lower rudders. Uh, you get a better view of the upper and lower rudders in this aft version. You can see the ground crew is doing an engine run up. Uh, in this view you get a good view of the uh, minimal fuselage structure, just a flat uh, frame to which amounted all the aircraft components. You can see the fairly um, noticeable positive incidence of the wing where the aft end, uh, trailing edge of the wing is lower than the leading edge. Also a good view of the upper and lower rudder. In addition, you can see the aft end of the uh, stabilizer is slightly up. Again, that's the warping to control the elevator function to control the pitch of the uh, spin aircraft. This final underside view of the prototype gives good details of the landing gear and uh, its attachment to the fuselage, how the wing is attached, um, and then the engine, and again the profusion of flying wires. It's hard to believe that just four years after the spin was developed in 1915, this is a picture of Anthony Fokker in the cockpit of the Fokker E3 Eindecker, a uh, single wing uh, airplane. The Eindecker is important because this was the world's first purpose designed uh, fighter aircraft. Uh, fighter aircraft up until that time in World War I were converted to scout or reconnaissance aircraft. Fokker with the E3 made this the world's very first uh, purpose designed fighter. You can see the smaller landing gear to minimize drag, uh, the more robust fuselage and tail section, still a single cabin strut on the fuselage with uh, wires to keep the wing in place, and on this prototype for test flights no uh, uh, any sort of armament um, uh, machine gun mounted on it just for the initial test flights. This modern day replica of the Eindecker again shows the uh, clean layout, very uh, characteristic of aircraft today, and the fuselage mounted machine gun. The mission of course was to shoot down uh, Allied aircraft. Just two years later in 1917, Fokker produced the triplane. Uh, you note know that there's just a cabine strut holding on the upper wing, the mid and lower wing directly on the fuselage with a single interplane strut holding it all together, just a minimum of uh, flying and rigging wires as the wings gain in their uh, Fokker's knowledge of design strength what to do. Perhaps the most advanced aircraft Fokker did in 1918, just seven years after the spin, was a Fokker D7. The wings are completely self-supporting. The end struts between the upper and lower wings, uh, outer end struts, are there for visual purposes only. The pilots just would not fly an airplane without the end struts in place. They just could not believe that the wings are self-supporting structures, which they were. And you can see also the complete lack of any flying wires between the fuselage and the end struts. The final version done by Fokker was the Fokker D8 in uh, the middle of 1918. Again, a smaller aircraft, uh, very hard to see due to the small size up in the air, just a single wing. The struts hold the wing in place, uh, but what's important about the Fokker D8 here is the strength of the wing. There's obviously no uh, rigging or flying wires on the wing, and there's a very robust internal design to make the wing strong that can be shown in this picture here, where you literally have people sitting on the wing. It's hard to believe that this plane Designed in 1918, it was just seven years of the 1911 Fokker spin uh, with all the necessary flying wires to keep things in place. Just an idea of the ability of Anthony Fokker and the design process of the day. The spin is a very interesting aircraft and is an ideal candidate for a radio control model airplane with surface area moments and overall visual appeal. I did create a radio control model of the spin. Uh, here is a picture of the spin uh, held by my son Michael. 28-inch uh, wingspan uh, came in at 2.8 ounces, three channels of control for rudder, elevator, and throttle control. The, uh, my model of the spin uses absolutely normal building materials of balsa and plywood. Uh, it's a completely self-supporting structure. The rigging wires are just thread uh, to simulate a visual effect. A complete set of CAD computer-aided design plans is available for the spin. Everything needed to build the spin is on the plans to include a complete set of assembly instructions, and the plans are available at www.indoorflyingmodel.com. The spin flies very well. Uh, this is a picture of it taking off at our local indoor flight facility. 
Uh, I use the Park Zone line of ultra micro radio control electronics. Again, that information is on the website. And it just makes for a very easy to fly, pleasant indoor radio control model airplane.